This next part of the fundamental theorem I wanted to do first using a context, which is this velocity position context we're so familiar with. Um, so I think it'll the fundamental theorem will be revealed here, even though it's not a proof, but you'll see it pretty clearly if we just find the average velocity of this position function here uh, on the interval 3 to 6 in two ways. So here are the two ways we're going to do it. The first is we're going to view we're going to view the um, we're going to view this problem as saying I, I want to find the average so I want to find the average velocity that's the average value of the velocity function right that that is average velocity the average value of your velocity function now I don't see my velocity function here but I mean we could just take the derivative of, of my position function and find it pretty quickly. So I'll just note over here, notice that the velocity function is just 2t. So the other way I can find the average velocity is I can think of it as the average rate of change of your position function. Right? So those are, that is two ways to find the average velocity, so I can set those equal to each other. Right? Those are two ways of finding the average velocity. So now let's actually write the mathematical expressions. The average value of the velocity function on the interval 3 to 6, that's just the definition of average value. So that's 1 over uh, 6 minus 3, the integral from 0, uh, from 3 to 6 rather. under my velocity function, which is um, 2t. So that's going to be equal to the average rate of change of position. Well, that's just, uh, that's just s of, that's just s of uh, 6 minus s of 3 divided by 6 minus 3 and I, here I'm not even so interested in the answer what I'm interested in is uh, this relationship do you notice that the 1 over 6 minus 3's are going to cancel and so now what I've done is I've said well if I want you know in, in this discussion of averages what emerged here and I'm going to actually put the velocity back in here. What emerged was a relationship was a relationship between an integral, a definite integral, and and derivatives. So I mean imagine for a second you were interested in the value you were interested in this definite integral. What this equation is saying is that if you want this value exactly, not you know, not an approximation, not you know, using your calculator. If you wanted it exactly, all you need to do is use your position function, evaluate it at six, and subtract it, subtract its value at three. Right. The left part of this equation is is a sum. Right. It's the sum of a, you know infinite number of rectangles, and we've just we've taken that very difficult problem and said well you can get that answer by turning it into this subtraction problem but all you need to know is is an antiderivative so that's the key part the, um, so velocity is the derivative let's actually use v of t v of t is the derivative derive derivative of s of t which means we can say that s of t is an antiderivative of v of t 
So to spell it out, to really spell it out, I want you to notice that this says in the box, this says that to evaluate a definite integral, you simply need to, the word simply I guess should be in quotes, because it might not always be so simple, but this you simply need to come up with an antiderivative of the function inside and subtract. Right? So evaluate it at the upper and lower, lower limits of integration and subtract. So I'll give you a, a, an example on the next page of an application of the fundamental theorem. So let's see how we can apply this. So let's say, uh, let's let let's let um, f of x equals uh, let's just let it equal x squared. And let's say we want to evaluate the integral from two to five. Right, or I mean, right. So let's say we wanted to do that. Notice that graphically, what we're being asked to do is find the area under the curve f of x equals x squared. on the interval 2 to 5. So we're trying to find that area. Now that's a hard problem as, as far as we're concerned. We know we know our calculator can do it, but it's a smoothly it's a curve that's changing smoothly. We can't use geometry. Um, we could make Riemann sums, but let's just use the fundamental theorem. The fundamental theorem says take an uh, take an antiderivative of f of x equals x squared. So uh, I said an antiderivative because there are many, and we'll we'll see why it doesn't matter. But let's use the easiest one. Let's call. Let's use um. When use capital F, an antiderivative of that guy would be one third x cubed. So you can check that by taking its derivative, but you'll see that's an antiderivative. And that means I'm going to do um, the antiderivative evaluated at five minus the antiderivative evaluated at two. So one thing you use notationally you do is, here, why don't I just write this first? It's f of 5 minus f of 2. And that is uh, 1 third 5 cubed minus 1 third 2 cubed, which equals 25 thirds minus 8 thirds, which equals 16 thirds or five and a third. So the power of that statement here is that we found we found this area exactly, it's not an approximation, and we did it by using an antiderivative and subtracting. And that that accumulating area has anything to do with uh, antiderivatives was again, like I said, historically not obvious. So I have the calculator up here as well just to prove to you that this is in fact the exact area. And um, this is going to open up a whole new uh, horizon of problems that we can, we can actually analyze. And it kind of makes, uh, it's, it's what makes calculus really interesting. Is this connection between integrals uh, and, and antiderivatives and derivatives. So we'll formalize this on the next video.